Hey guys, what's going on? It's Two Minutes to Review. I'm Matt. I'm Zach. And if you haven't joined us for one of these podcasts before, what we're doing here is we're giving an album review, either current or past, but the caveat is it has to be under two minutes. And Zach, what are we reviewing today? So we are reviewing an album that actually came out 20 years ago this year. We are reviewing Rage Against the Machines, The Battle of Los Angeles. So now this record was not only named by outlets like Time Magazine and Rolling Stone as the best album of 1999, but it also is highlighted as the band's last official record together. Uh, essentially, around uh, roughly a year later, the band ended up dissolving. Um, they ended up doing a covers album um, that came out, I think, two months after they officially broke up. But the Battle of Los Angeles is essentially the last time we've ever heard new Rage Against the Machine material. And I, I honestly, I don't know about you, Matt, but I can't believe it's actually been 20 years. since I know. It came out. I can vividly remember being in high school and the first copy that I actually had of this album was a, uh, a burn that somebody made for me. I feel like this is definitely an album that people remember the hype around. Remember when the band performed at the Democratic Convention in Los Angeles, yep. like the guerrilla style protest show to essentially promote this album. Yep. There's so many vivid memories about the band because at this point when they came out with the Battle of Los Angeles, it had been three or four years after Evil Empire came out. So they were really like the coolest, most almost dangerous, most dangerous band in rock and mainstream. Music. I, I would almost compare it to when Guns N' Roses first came out. Yeah. And you can almost even make the argument that, well, I don't want to give away my review, but um, I was about to say something that could give a hint at what I was about to say. All right. So if I remember correctly, you went first last time. I don't remember. That was so long ago. All right. Well, but I you think you first, went first. But you'll, right. I'll let you go first. So okay. do you want to do some vocal warm-ups before? <clears throat> <clears throat> okay, I'm ready. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Three, two, one. So the Battle of Los Angeles, uh, this is an absolute 100% classic album that belongs in anyone's record collection that's a fan of rock or metal or funk. Um, if you don't like Rage Against the Machine, um, especially on this album, I would say that you probably just don't like political music. I'm not the biggest fan of political music, but this one, uh, I, I would say that you can overcome the politicalness on this album because it's that good. The lyrics and the riffs from Zach De La Roche and Tom Morello are both catchy and memorable. Um, you come back time and time again to uh, all, all the songs that are on here. An example of uh, Sleep Now in the Fire, just such a catchy riff on that one. Testify, Guerrilla Radio, War Within a Breath, Born a Broken Man. So many memorable tracks with so many catchy lyrics and so many catchy riffs. And just interesting things that Tom Morello does on guitar. Um, and also on the album, the energy is off the charts. You can get behind this album because you know that what they're talking about and how they're playing they believe in 100% of what they're doing, and they give it everything that they have. I, the only thing that I can really criticize this album for is for being a little bit too political because they try to tackle so many different issues on it. But outside of this, this is a stellar album. Cool. <laughs> um, all right. Very cool. So now it's my turn, right? Well, let me. Uh, you want me to give the star oh, rating? Well, yeah, I guess you should. Yeah, five stars. Yeah. I'm going to... No, I'm not going to say it now, but go ahead. Um, anyway, <laughs> let me just do... You really just want to get into your review, don't I you? I do, because I, I, I'm going to just start us off. I I mean, I... No, 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 no. no. This all has to be inside you're right, you're of right, your right, You're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. Sorry. I'm, I'm just... Already, I'm, I'm, I'm get, breaking the rules already. You're right. No, you're right. absolutely right. Get ready. <laughs> Let's do it. That was it? Yeah. At least I took a big, deep breath. That's all I need. That's all right. how professional I am. All, all right. I need is a, a, a throat scratch. Okay. Ready? Mm-hmm. Three, two. You know, I'm going to make you wait a little bit longer just because I know you really want to give this review. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Three, <laughs> two, one, go. All right. I'm going to make a bold statement here. This is Rage Against the Machine's best album. Yeah, I said it because songs like Gorilla Radio and Sleep Now in the Fire, it really those are possibly the band's two best songs of all time. Nothing against uh, the self-titled album and Evil Empire. Um, but then there, you also have songs like Mike Check and Ashes in the Fall. It really captures the band's hip hop influences perfectly. 
Uh, first off, Zach De La Roche, Rocha, he is one of the, hands down the most recognizable and powerful voices of the 90s, if not of all time. Like when you hear his voice, you know it's him. And he just has, this is, album captures his most passionate performance in my in my opinion. And Tom Morello, I mean, he is such a unique guitar player. He creates sounds that makes you question whether that actually is a guitar. Um, but then as much as those two shine, you can't take away from the rhythm section, Tim Comerford and Brad Wilk. They add such an incredible groove that at times is heavy and at times is just soulful and groovy that it just really makes unites the whole sound together. Um, I could go on and on about how great this record is, but the, all I'll just say, in short, this album, even after 20 years, still sounds timeless. We have a time. All right. And your star? Five. I, I always liked this, especially the singles off this album, but going back and re-listening to it from start to finish, it just really reminded me how unique this band was and how much... It actually also made me less sad that the band isn't still around because if you had told me that this album was released last week, I actually would believe it. It's just something about the sound just still sounds so fresh um, that I'm actually okay if the band never reunites again because at least we have this album. Right. And I, I, I feel the exact same way. I mean, it sucks that they're not around and they didn't put out more material, but you went out on such a high note that uh, it's going to be whatever you do next is going to be really hard to recapture that if you yeah. come back now. There is such a fire on this record. There's such an energy that no matter how you actually, whether you actually agree with the vocal statements on the album or not, there's something for everyone on this record. Off the charts. I mean, there's, there's absolutely nothing on this album to dislike unless you just dislike the band or dislike political music on its own. I mean, that's about it. So now none of that matters though what we said the real deciding factor is who had the best time so matt zach are you ready i'm ready drum roll your time one minute and 28 seconds Ooh, that's kind of low all right but zach what your time, time is one minute 24 point 36 oh! Yeah, I've reclaimed the title. Yeah. Darn it. Which is something that you never hear in a Rage Against the Machine song. Nope. Darn it. Darn it. But we can't curse. No cussing. Yeah. Oh, man. That was a tough one. Shucks. But you know who really wins? You for listening to the album. Yeah. If you don't have it, go pick it up. Seriously, it's it, yeah. it's incredible, start to finish. I mean, Rage Against the Machine rarely missteps. And on this one, there this is there's... N none and i also recommend even if you do have it uh, you know what give it another listen because i have a feeling that because it's funny i feel like it took me a few years to kind of go back to rage against the machine and appreciate what we've been missing because at the time that i discovered it rage against the machine were already starting to be like kind of really hyped and you really couldn't go anywhere without hearing fans complain about that rage against the machine wasn't around anymore that and then also hearing Audio Slave always on the radio. Nothing against Audio Slave. That's a band that I also kind of rediscovered how special they were, but they were also really overplayed on the radio when yeah, they first came to, out. To a certain so extent. I feel like there's, I wouldn't be surprised if many people like us uh, haven't really given the album uh, another listen in a long, long time. 20 years. Seriously. That's incredible that it's been 20 years. Yeah. I go back because what I love to do is I love to, um, and this shows. My age, I have to uh, reburn my music just because the quality that I, I originally ripped it at wasn't great. But going back and just, you, you know, burn CDs. I know. Going back and just re ripping the music again and putting it in a higher quality, you actually get to appreciate more of the nuances because the, the, the audio is much clearer and it's just amazing what you might have missed. Uh, going through this the first time, especially with all the, the guitar work that Tom Morello does and, and the rhythm section, just everything about this album, there's something to rediscover whenever you go back and listen to it. Yeah. So now let us know what you think, though. Were we right about giving this album so much praise? Do you think we even overhyped it? Let us know on our social channels, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, at Epic Footnote. We want to hear your thoughts on this. But thanks so much for listening. I'm Zach. I'm Matt. And we hope to have you tune in again next time. See you later.